Hello, this is Michael Owens with Here Come the Irish, and you're watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Go Irish. Here's Zibikowski trying to get to the outside. He has blockers in front. Tom Zibikowski, Malone the beat, shakes him off to the five, and it's touchdown. How's it going, everyone? I'm Sean Moriarty. I'm Benjamin Walters. And we are the Two Irish Brothers Show. Welcome to the to this recent episode. But, but before we go any further, you guys know the drill. Hit that subscribe tab on the bottom right-hand corner. Like or dislike the video and hit that bell icon so you always get notified for when we release a new video. Now, speaking of hitting that subscribe tab, we are like seven subscriptions away from 900. Yep. Every hundred is a mile. It's close. Us. Yep. So... So we're that close to 900. I know that doesn't seem like a lot because there's so much, so many bigger channels out there that we're competing with. But you know that's a milestone for us. I mean, it definitely is. 900 sure. people taking the time to subscribe and watch us—that's pretty cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. But also, we have a couple of announcements for you guys. Obviously, you heard Ben here talk about uh, his uh, schedule change, so we will be able to do some more stuff during the week, and we have a big announcement to make. We are going to be going live at least once a week anyway, and our set date is every Thursday night, a yep. time a time to be determined, but we're looking at Thursday nights, so Ben and I will be live, and yep. we hope to see you guys there, as many of you as possible. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, also, the uh, other things like uh, Ben's date with a few Happy Meals, that'll be happening in, in the near future sometime. That is happening and pretty soon. Okay, all right. We haven't even talked about it yet, not too much anyway. But we also have our Battle Hawks talk coming up pretty soon. Yep. More, to, more to come on that, but I want to keep it a surprise. We got something yep. awesome coming out. Yeah. So with that mouthful said, Ben, I might as well just give you the mic and let you roll. Because I know we were talking uh, early last week. You have a lot of things on your mind that you want to get off your chest. <laughs> so I really should just I really should just let you roll with this right now. But let's just start there. Just you know, just just dive right in. What what does talk about the stuff that you've had on your mind? I mean, we need we need to talk about being an elite, an elite fan base. Okay. Like we're in year three with Freeman now. Okay. And the schedule favors the schedule is favorable this year. Okay. Like, and on top of the schedule being favorable, we have a 12-team playoff starting. I mean, the chances of us making playoffs are significant to the highest degree. Like, it's absolutely awesome. But if we want to have an elite team, we have to have an elite fan base. Why would a guy want to come to Notre Dame? If you're selling the stadium out to others, other schools, and we've talked about this many times, I, mean, I know, but you can't. I'm sorry, it's like well, it's one way or the other. Okay, like it's one way or the other. Alabama doesn't get taken over. I'm sorry, Ohio State doesn't get taken over. Clemson doesn't get taken over on big years for these other schools like LSU, Auburn, you know, Washington, Washington, Oregon that are making runs, Texas. They don't get taken over. I'm sorry they don't, you know, and like why NIL aside, because I know like the NIL is now affecting some of these guys' decisions legitimately, which I get, I get it. You know, if you can make a bunch of money, go for it, you know, and if it's Colorado that's going to help you do that, then, you know, by all means. But why would a guy want to come to Notre Dame if he knows that the stadium is going to be overtaken by Ohio State fans, or the stadium is going to be taken over by Nebraska fans, or the stadium is going to be taken over by Georgia fans. Like, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. And I feel like our fan base has this, this sense of, like, borderline entitlement to winning a national title. Well, we haven't done it since, what, 88? Like, I mean, and you have to put it in perspective, Okay. There's a hundred and what, 23, 25 teams, whatever it is now in maybe even more at this point in division one. Now I understand that it's not really a one in 125 for an example. It's probably more of like a one in 15 chance of winning the title because there's probably only 15 teams that could legitimately do it, but still, 
Okay, one in fifteen chance, still low odds, and it just it it it, it bothers me to see guys that dog on the team but then turn around and like defend the team against like a Michigan fan or a Texas fan or whoever, you can't say the team's going to go eight and four. And then on the same breath go, well, we're better than Michigan. Okay. Well, you can't have it both ways. I'm sorry. Like you can't. Yeah. Which one is it? We're either going to go eight and four in your opinion, or we're going to win it all. We're better than this team. What is it? Make up your damn mind. So I hear so, you on that then. That's just that's just my issue. And is that and, just is that is this just stuff that you're seeing from fans across social media or like what what triggers? I mean, social media and people that I bump into and people that I've talked to. I mean, I have friends that you know call themselves the realist, and I know we love that term here on our oh, show. Oh yes, and t-shirts coming soon. You know, so yeah, and I mean, like, it just bothers them. You know, it's like, so what? You're right. You're you're right, and then what? Like, what? Drew Pine fails, or Hartman fails, or whatever. I mean, so what? Then we're back to square one, and now we're not winning a national title, and now you're still upset. Like, what's the point? So, so yeah, that's just it. it you know, I've start. I've come to realize, Ben, that with a lot of a lot of these so-called realist fans, what they get a hard on for the most. I mean, I still think they're they're crap fans, don't get me wrong, but what they really get a hard on for is being right. They want to be right. That they, it's like they they have like a, a ego like a ego, they have an ego. Right. They have an ego. They're kind of narcissistic. They just want to be right. I mean, it doesn't matter if uh you know, we get okay, let, let's just go with Riley Leonard for for example. And this is just a complete hypothetical. You know, we got everyone right. Well, not everyone, but there's so many people in our fan base. They want uh, Steve and Jelly to be the starter because of how, how he played in the in the Sun Bowl and he's he's a good kid and he he has potential. I'm not going to I'm not going to deny that. But you got a number of people that pretty much hope that uh in more or less in more or less words that Riley Leonard fails. Right. Why would you want any player to fail? Just what you're you're that pissed off that you want a guy to fail just because your particular guy that you favor isn't going to be the number one guy. I mean, I see this myself too across you know social media message boards. Um, you know, sometimes I see it on a, a Notre Dame Nation fight of the Irish. Yes, that's a little plug there <laughs> on Facebook. But yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. These people, these people predict. Um, you know, they 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 say we're they say we're going to go eight and four. Then we do well, and I've I've seen this happen before. We do well, and they're like, "Yeah, I always believe in the team." Shut the hell up! Right, exactly. exactly. Shut the hell up! Yeah. These, if you ain't riding, if you ain't riding in the beginning, don't be riding at all. Like that's the way I look at that. Yep. And I get I it. I get it. We've talked about this before, and people are probably uh, turning off the video by now. I hope not, but. <laughs> it can't be said enough until it changes. Right. Until it changes, I'm not going to stop talking about it. And I know you're not going to stop stop talking about it. Now, I will say, I will give credit where credit is due. Against Ohio State last season, that stadium was not taken over. Yeah. Our, our, our fans, for the most part, came through. Yeah. But it still doesn't uh, change all the talk on, on you know, the, the, on social media. And, you know, that's probably where you're like, just ignore it. Just ignore it. Well, you can only ignore it for so long. Eventually, you have to address it. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like what you said. What what What's it going to be? You want the, you think we're going eight and four, we're going to have a mediocre season? Or, right. um, you know, you go and tell a Michigan fan that we're better than you, and then we you hope we go all the way. Which is it? Yep. This, 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 where, this, where, this is where in recent years it's been so confusing with some of our fan with some members of our fan base. I just yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. And this and this doesn't this doesn't encapsulate the whole fan base. It doesn't. But it's just the 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 realists, the negative ones, they they stand out. I hate saying it, but they do. Yep. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So on a on a different note, Ben, I hope I didn't cut you off too much. If there's no, no. Out, keep rolling no. if you Keep rolling. <laughs> so, in other news, uh, some some that I found interesting. Um, 
Our former quarterback that you mentioned earlier, Drew Pine, he has transferred to Mizzou to have a yeah. shot to be the quarterback there. Yep. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. And Mizzou is intriguing. Mizzou is one of those teams that's on the cusp, if you will. You know, like they, they made a lot of noise in the SEC last year. They really held some teams, um, made some teams honest, I guess I should say. Obviously, they beat Ohio State. I mean, granted, Ohio State was missing a few guys that were big, big key players, you know. But it's no easy task beating Ohio State. I mean, I don't care no. who you are. You still um, got to play the game. So, yeah, I mean, Mizzou, it, very, intri- very, very intriguing with Pine. I wish him nothing but the best. Like, he did his time with Notre Dame. He did all that was asked of him and then some. Like, you know, he may have some, some of his issues, you know, with – throws and all that but i mean as a as a player and as a person like you know i hope i legitimately hope that he achieves what he wants to achieve so well, well and the funny thing about that then is i got a little rant to do myself here but i'll keep it short this time on the facebook page that i'm a part of notre dame nation fight of the irish i made a post about that because there were some people uh not many not many surprisingly basically dogging the kid saying what you know whatever who cares um just like he was a piece of garbage you know when he was with us right um but first off the funny thing is i had some old guy come at me getting all pissed off because all i did was i said that drew, drew might not have been elite but he's but he did a lot of wonders for us this guy got all pissed off because i said drew pine wasn't elite well i'm sorry he's not an elite quarterback but he has a potential to be a good quarterback you know, he's a guy that can that can lead you down the field, game manager type quarterback or field general, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So I had a guy flip crap over me saying, oh, hey, did you play football? Did you win championships? Grow up. I'm like, OK, I need to grow up because I said Drew Pine wasn't elite. Are you kidding me? So it's crap like that. And the ones who the all I, all I can say is this to anybody out there who has dog Drew Pine and ripped him apart. Hey. He say, well, he wasn't the sole reason, but he was a big part of the reason that saved our, well, the one of the key factors that saved our 2022 season. I mean, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a nine-win season capped uh, capped off by a win in the Gator Bowl that make that that is that ninth win, the Gator Bowl, or would you rather okay. have a, would you rather have a six and six or uh, sub 500 season? Take your pick. I think I'd rather go with the the nine-win season with the Gator Bowl victory. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like, I don't understand dog and dog and this kid. And he he put up good numbers for us too. It's like they see so the line play that he had. Yes, he put up, he put up some decent numbers. Yes. So I just, but in general, I just don't understand dog and these. Uh, like I can understand if you're if you're trashing on a college player who has a big wow. mouth and an ego, and uh, you know, hence your guys like Caleb Williams and. Uh, right. Who's another one that had a big mouth? And well, I'm sure it'd take hours to list a bunch of them, but I can't think of names right off the bat. But um, anyway, it doesn't matter. I can understand that because they're kind of caught, they're putting attention on themselves and asking for it. But when it's a kid who's playing his guts out, trying hard, keeps to himself, doesn't open his mouth, why would you trash a kid like that? Right. Yep. Not deserving on whatsoever of that. Yeah. Nope. I agree. I agree. So I just I'll never understand it. No. I mean, you know, they're they're kids. But yeah. which which I find interesting too. He has three years of eligibility left, which I don't know how that works, but so he could he could potentially be another uh Sam Hartman, you know, you know, a veteran and a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, so all I know is uh, I'll ever, I'll forever be thankful to Drew Pine step, stepping up in 2022 the way he did, you know. And there's no reason to dog him. No, not at all. No, I totally agree. So uh, one thing that we could also talk about, Ben, March uh, March 11th to 2024 today, mm-hmm. uh, few a uh, few big things happening. Mm-hmm. One one starting locally. It was uh, day one for you at your new job. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, it's my it's my younger brother's thirty seventh birthday, and three, three, uh, get, come on, where's the camera? Okay, there we go. Three, 
uh, the start of NFL free agency. Well, the the legal tampering period. <laughs> yep. So um, what a day. Yeah. What a day. Just, I mean, some of them we knew. Like some of them you kind of knew were coming. Some of them. But others you were just like, oh, really? <clears throat> so yeah. I got to start with the Bears. So we signed – this was technically the night before, but they po- they added it on today to make things look better, like we were more active. But we got uh, – we basically secured our uh, back, uh, defensive backfield with uh, – What's his name? Um, we signed a safety to a two-year deal. He was a former Pro Bowler. I'm, why am I blanking on his name? Um, but anyway, just but moving right along, though, we also – the big one that I couldn't believe but I'm happy about, running back DeAndre Swift. Because I was, I was so sure that the Bears were looking, were looking at Saquon or possibly a Derrick Henry. Yeah. Which I would have been happy with either one of those guys. But – uh. Well, DeAndre Swift, he's good, and he was uh, more of the budget. The yeah. budget well, I think he was more of the budget, and I think you're getting a better a better overall healthy back than Saquon and or Derrick Henry. Like, Saquon's talent level is just on a whole other level than most people, but his problem is he just can't stay healthy. Swift has been healthy and has produced. Yeah. You know, so and Henry's towards the twilight of his career. So I mean, Henry isn't going to be the every down back. Yeah, sure. well, but I'm just saying with D- Derrick Henry, he's durable. And if you could have got him on like a discount, like no. If you get Derrick Henry, I mean, you got a legit guy that can get you a first down if you're a couple yards away or a touchdown. You know, when you're in the end, when you're in the red zone. So right. yeah, for sure. I'm just saying, like overall, like the safest route is DeAndre Swift. So well, well, let's get to your Dolphins. They they made a little bit, bit of a splash on defense. Yeah, picked up um, linebacker from Seattle, which I was I was happy about. Um, on the other side of that coin, though, we lost Andrew Van Ginkle, which I'm very sad about. Um, he signed with the Vikings, and he had said multiple times that he wanted to stay with the Dolphins. So I'm really really sad. He played for Wisconsin um, in his college career. Um, very underrated, very overlooked guy on the team, um, by people who didn't watch Dolphins day in and day out. Um, so I'm sad to see him, see him go. We re-signed Robert Hunt. Um, us Notre Dame people know Robert Hunt very well. He was instrumental in both of George's victories over Notre Dame, um, in recent years. So... I'm glad to have him back because he was legit pancaking um, Notre Dame players when we were playing against Georgia. So I'm happy to have I'm happy to have Robert Hunt back because he's been very healthy and he deserves the money that he got. Um, another underrated lineman, like you know, people think like Quentin Nelson and some of those other big name guys, but Robert Hunt has been phenomenal. So I'm glad that we were able to re-sign him. Yeah, um, but the big signings, man, like the ones across the board. Dude, like Josh Jacobs to the Packers. Wow. Um, I'll, say, I'll say this. I'd rather face being a, a Bears fan. I'd rather face Josh Jacobs than uh, Adam Jones. Yeah. Okay. Is, 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 yeah. Adam Jones, right? Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. My bad. I can be bad with names. I don't know, man. Jacobs. I think Jacobs slowed down because how bad the Raiders were. I think, I, I think Jacobs is going to be a pretty. He's going to be pretty dangerous for the Packers. If they, if they can keep that line going. I mean, I don't like the pa- like I don't like the Packers at all. Like as a as a person who is not a Chicago fan and not an NFC North fan, I cannot stand the Packers. But Josh Jacobs in my opinion is a phenomenal running back. Um and speaking of phenomenal running backs, the other really big one was other than Saquon, but the other big one in my opinion was Eckler to the Commanders. The, oh, commanders, I the commanders are building something right now. Like I can, they have made some moves and I was like, holy cannoli. Like they could potentially be a pretty big dark horse for this upcoming season. If they can keep trending in that direction. Um, well, obviously well, that, Saquon mm-hmm. makes the news. So, right. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about some of the other key signings that I want to 
it'll it'll come together once you hear it. But uh, uh, look at all. Let's talk about in specific, in particular, all the quarterback movements. So yes. we'll start small. Gardner Minshew went to the Raiders. Two years, yeah. I think twenty five million dollars. A safe so, little pickup for the Raiders. Yes. Yes. Russell Wilson going to the Steelers, which that was I think he that was announced last night, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, then of course, um, Kirk Cousins four year deal with the Falcons. So he's leaving the NFC North. Um, I want to say there was another, I want to say there was another quarterback, but I, oh, well, we got Mac Jones going to the, going to, uh, the Jaguars. Yeah. That was like yesterday or the day before. Yeah. Yeah. But so here's, what's interesting for me not to bring, I know I'm harp, I'm taking it, taking it back to the bears here, making this a bears talk, but I'm not trying to. I'm kind of happy about all the all these moves because I don't care what anybody says. I want to keep Justin Fields in Chicago. We got so many Bears fans that are hell bent on trading him and wanting to draft Caleb Williams. No, I'm sorry, and I'm not saying this because I'm a Notre Dame guy and because Caleb Williams is USC. I'm not sold on him. I am not sold on Caleb Williams. Why? And to be fair, you USC. They didn't exactly have it all put together, like as far as offensive line and so on, right? Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing, though. Caleb Williams, despite all that, when he's actually played a good defense, um, he he's been exposed when he's played against a good defense. And on top of that, he has character and behavioral issues. I mean, yes. Uh, well, I'm just gonna say it straight up. It's weird when a guy paints his nails. I'm sorry. Well, actually, no, I'm not sorry. I think it is weird. But not just that. It's what he paints on them. You know, F right. NB, F Utah. No class whatsoever in that. Yep. And, then, and then doing things like um, jumping up into the stands and crying with his parents after he lost a game. Well, listen, there's nothing wrong with showing emotion. I'm not saying that that's wrong. But don't make a spectacle, dude. Wait wait till after you're out of the stand or out of the stadium. Do it behind closed doors. But when you make a spectacle – and presenting yourself that way. And then on top of that, rumor has it that he wants a, a minority stake in whatever team uh, drafts him. I'm sorry. No. What, who the hell do you think you are? You haven't done shit yet to even yeah. be mentioned, to be even be mentioned or talked about in that the same category with something like that. So yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not sold on Caleb, Caleb Williams. My initial impression, I think he's going to be a bust. The Bears would be better off keeping Justin Fields trade and uh, as unusual as it, is, as it is for the second year in a row you trade that number one pick which again i know it's unusual but do it get yourself get yourself some more capital especially for this year's draft because we only have five picks so far in this draft i mean yeah granted you got two number ones but still we have nothing in the second we have two fourth we have two fourth round picks a third round pick but after the fourth round nothing yeah. So, what's the best way to build capital? Hmm? Moving back. Yes, moving back. Moving back. Yeah, I and agree. So, and so it's like that's also something else too is we can't be the Bears franchise can't be doing this every every three. You can't be doing this. You can't be having a different quarterback every three or four years. And no. this this is one of the reasons why I hate the Packers, other than them beating us, is they know how to work with quarterbacks. Why can't that be the Bears? Why can't that be us? You know, of course, some people are going to hate that I say us, but whatever. I don't know, but I'm not trying to make this about the Bears. I'm just, you know, kind of venting some personal frustrations with my favorite team. Uh, yeah, no, I get it. Believe me, I live, I live in Bears country. I mean, I live in Illinois, and as a non-fan who doesn't have any skin in the game when it comes to that team, I see things and I'm like, really? Do you really want that? Do you really want to go down that road? Do you see the problem here? Like, I see the problem, and I don't even root for your team. So, yeah. Yep, I agree. I, I uh, Yeah, and there is no – and this is something I tell people. There is no metric, none. There is no metric anywhere that's going to say this guy is going to be elite and this guy is going to be a boss. There is nothing. It is all chance. It is literally a th- dark throw in the dark of whether Caleb Williams is going to be a bust or not, whether um, Bo Nix is going to be a bust or not, Drake May, uh, you know, you name it. Like, all these guys. There are guys that they say are elite that that stay elite, like Joe Burrow. You know, then there are guys that 
like Mahomes who are said that they're not going to do anything and then they're a three time Super Bowl champion. Like, I mean, so there is no metric. There, there is not. There's nothing. You know, same with these like ratings in college, like four star, five star, one star, whatever. Okay. Like Ed Reed was a two star recruit. Remember that. Like Ed Reed, who's most likely going to go to the Hall of Fame, was a two star recruit. Like, come on. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's crazy. But wow. yeah, it's, this football season is going to be nuts. Oh, I can't wait for like, it, dude. I can't wait until movements and we got spring football coming. Like, holy cow. Like, I can't believe what's going down right now. I'm ready for it. I'm and, ready. And for we it. haven't, and we haven't even gotten a quarter of the way done with stuff. Like we still have tons of signings to go, tons of things to happen, recruiting and all that. Like, yeah, we, we got, we got the UFL starting up here in a couple weeks. We have uh, the Notre Dame spring game, um, the, uh, the NFL draft in late April. So it's, it's going to be crazy coming close to a half hour for this episode. Uh, how about you, Ben? Anything else you want to add? I got nothing. You know, we're just waiting on some sp- more spring stuff, some spring updates. Um, definitely interesting, you know, teams getting started and, you know, some big name coaches no longer in the game anymore. And the Kentucky Wildcats fighting at practice, Kentucky Wildcats fighting at practice. That was interesting. Hope if they had that kind of fight in the actual games, I think that they would win some more, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So yeah, you know, you get your, you get it out of your system, you know, you, yeah. The, it's football people, you know, people look too far into some of that stuff. It's, you know, of course. things boil over. And when you got, you know, that kind of thing, it's, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, on that note, um, I think this is a good point to cut things off. Remember people hit that subscribe tab. We're so close to the next, uh, the next plateau being 900 subscribers and like, or dislike the video. Cause it helps with the algorithm. We can't yes. say that enough. So with that said, I'm Sean Moriarty. I'm Benjamin Walters. And as we always say, good night, God bless, and go Irish! Go Irish!